And tell me um, about the opportunity that presented itself to Paladin. What sort of money we're talking about? What sort of services? Uh, how big was the pile on offer? For the contract in Manus Island, That's right. I think it was in the vicinity of $423 million was the gazetted amount. I think the actual payments received were less than that. With that huge amount of money sloshing around, what were the corruption risks in the Pacific Islands that you faced? I think uh, corruption risks occur wherever you do work and if people have uh, vested interests or they see opportunity where there's, there's contracts. For us, we had a contract which... For, I think for some people represents an opportunity. There's certain gateways before contracts will go forward, uh, signing the contract, getting work permits and visas for your people to deliver on the contract. And uh, it, you need to clear those gateways before you can get through. And I think um, people can put pressure on you around that. But it's right, isn't it, that uh, officials from, in your case, Papua New Guinea, knew the importance of the Australian government of offshore processing continuing and therefore had huge leverage, if they wished, to demand payments, deals that might be untoward. Yeah, they, they could they could make pressure on it and we, we would have that put in front of us that if things weren't going to move forward or our contract could be cancelled or it wouldn't be renewed, uh, those sorts of things, everyone's always in that position to do that. Were you ever faced with a demand for a bribe? Uh, well, so we were approached by a number of individuals and organisations potentially on behalf of individuals. So those approaches were effectively asking us for, uh, they could offer to assist us and in return, we, you know, issues we're having around work permits or uh, other issues in the contract would potentially go away was the, the offer. Well, I'll if, tell you yeah. what a definition of a bribe is, is giving you a business advantage in return for a payment that is not appropriately due. Yeah, so I, I think, uh, yeah, the, I guess you could turn it in, in, that, in that sense. They were definitely asking for payments in return to assist us. And we never took those offers up, so what they would look like, uh, I, I don't know. To what person and to what country were these suspect or unusual payments made by Paladin? Uh, yeah, so they were made in Singapore and uh, the person, I can't remember the details of the person, but... Yeah, that was the that was the inference. As I said, we put in a board level policy around how these payments could be handled, how these approaches could be handled, and we took it on faith when we made that first payment that we would get some materiality around and actual services related to the contract that it was purported to be. I never saw those services, and I'm not aware that any of those services were delivered. You asked me before to um, what's a bribe. I explained a bribe is a deriving a business benefit that for a payment. That is not appropriately due. So yeah, so this would this is why I've raised this. That's, this is a red flag issue for me. It sounds like a lot like a bribe. The yes. circumstance you describe. Yes. How much are we talking? Oh, it was, it was over over a million dollars. Over a million dollars and more than one payment. This is ultimately Australian taxpayer money, isn't it? Well, I guess it, it's money that we've 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 earned in Paladin for services that we provided. You reported corruption concerns, bribery concerns to Home Affairs. Why? Uh, I, I think you've got an obligation if you get approaches to make to make these reports. So it's not a, not really an issue of why. It's a matter of uh, duty. And if you do get a an approach or you become aware of uh, an issue, then it's up it's up to you as an individual to to pass on that information. The people in the Department of Immigration Border Protection, which became Home Affairs, senior people knew that there was approaches to pay bribes. Yes, I, I, yeah, definitely. I mean, that, that's 100% did that we, that we pass on that information. What was their response? Uh, so they said to monitor it and, and, and inform them, and I said, we said we'll keep the information that we've got and we're happy to, uh, to assist with any investigation or whatever you want to do. Was there any, any investigation? So we left it with them. Uh, well, I made those verbal reports. We didn't like do a, do a, any police report at the time. We didn't do any uh, anything extra. We considered the contract and we looked at our obligations under the contract, and we met our obligations clearly. But we we, we told the, the senior people, and then uh, I mean it's up to them to then tell us what they want us to do uh, in that respect. But I think the other people in Paladin and Home Affairs. It's inconvenient to have a report like this out there and no one wants the inconvenience of it because these contracts are on a knife edge. They could be pulled by the government 
the Papua New Guinea government could pull their support for the contracts at any time. So no one from the government side wants that to happen. So anything that could be a threat to that, such as a report of corruption, is inconvenient. And I don't think they actively managed it with, a, with an enthusiasm you might expect to, to actually find uh, any truth. They managed it with, a, with an enthusiasm to, to close off the issue. So even though I had sent that email, uh, the other people in Paladin dealt with him after that. And, uh, and then they, I was advised that they, I said I had further information, further evidence that I could provide. And I was waiting for someone to come and talk to me about that. I was told that nothing else was required and they, they were okay. Uh, the advice I received from the, the CEO of Paladin was that uh, they were happy with the email, home affairs, but they would prefer a phone call.